Good morning, church family. A very warm welcome to our Sunday online service. If you're new to St Matthews or visiting us online, then a very special welcome to you. My name's Pads, and I really hope and pray that you're blessed by worshipping with us this morning. I'm dressed a little more casually today than normal, and that's because I'm not at the church or even in the vicarage. We're actually all the way down in Cornwall on Morgan Creek on the east side of the peninsula known as the Lizard. And this is the amazing view from our cottage as painted by my father-in-law many years ago. Isn't that amazing? It's beautiful. But with the wonder of Sunday Online, we can still join you for Sunday worship. And I'm really excited because my friend Matthew Stone from the Reading Central Salvation Army, whom I had invited to come and speak at St Matthew's in the summer, very kindly agreed to record his message for us so we don't miss out. So he will introduce himself later. And this morning, we're going to start with an amazing, energetic action song, which became a real favourite at the last Holiday Club. So, children and young people, this is the moment to drag mum and dad out of their comfy chairs or even out of bed and get them to join in because... I know you're going to join in and you're going to sing and dance along to Oh Wow What a God. (laughs) So everybody get ready. Come on, up on your feet. Prepare to work off some of that breakfast. And just before we start, I'll say a short prayer. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day and this new opportunity to worship you. You are the awesome God who created this beautiful world in which we live. And so we praise you, we worship you, and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, here we go.
you father son and holy spirit thank you for your love which never ends and always reaches out to us no matter what we've done no matter how much we've messed up or how far we've walked away from you and so we come to you now in confession and we say together father we have sinned against heaven and against you we are not worthy to be called your children we turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your forgiveness. We receive that now, knowing that we are new creations because of what Jesus has done for us. As we lay all our sins at the foot of his cross and we rejoice in the freedom that your love has won for us, we declare as we worship once more that all your promises are true, that they are yes and amen.
Isn't it wonderful that the God we worship is so faithful? He loves us so much. And when he makes a promise, he keeps it. When he makes a promise, the result is yes and amen. Well, now David and Judith are going to lead us in our prayers. And then Kirsty is going to read to us Psalm 103. And then Matthew Stone is going to bring us our message. Over to you, David and Judith. Oh, good morning. Um, we're going to use a simple acrostic uh, this morning as the basis for our prayers and to use the word psalm. Uh, so P is for praise, S is for seek, as in seek God's face, seek God's kingdom. Uh, a is for a field and abroad, which is national and international. L is for local needs and M is the ancient prayer, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. So in the response this morning is, God of all grace, hear our prayer. P is for praise. Father, we thank you that you have placed the book of Psalms in our Bibles as readily available source of life and reminder of your incredible grace. Thank you that you don't treat us as our sins deserve, but in Jesus you have put infinite distance between us and our guilt and welcomed us into your very throne room. We are indescribably grateful for this forgiveness and the grace that adopts mere humans as your very own children. Thank you. God of grace, hear our prayer. So S is for seek. So Father, we look to the day when the earth should be filled with the knowledge of your glory and we can no longer pray your kingdom come because it has arrived right now Lord we know that's far from the case and we want to seek your justice for the mistreated and abused and your vindication for a world that dishonors you you've appointed us your ambassadors so and we pray that you would make us agents of change so empowered by the Holy Spirit would you make us bright witnesses to new life? God of all grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. A is for a field and abroad. Father God, we pray for our nation, starting with the COVID situation. We don't know your purposes, but we do pray for a shortening of this trouble. We also want to pray for our economic predicament. We especially pray for wisdom for the Chancellor, Ricky Sunak, with Brexit consequences looming, we ask that sensible trade deals are signed before year end. God of all grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. So L is for local. And we want to pray, Lord, for those who have specific needs. We pray for our teachers as children return to school in a month's time. Give them joy to sustain them and protect their health. For the carers in our congregation, keep them well. For those of us facing redundancy, please would you provide for them. For Peter Cross and Frank Watkins needing your healing. And for Pat and Kirsty away on holiday, Lord would you refresh them. So, God of all grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. M is for Maranatha. The ancient cry of your church was, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Reclaim the earth, which is yours by right. Together we finish. Merciful, Merciful Father, Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for the sake of your Son. Our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, St. Matthews. This morning's uh, reading is from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits 
who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desire with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are but dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in, in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. Amen. Good morning. It's great to be able to share with you. My name is Matthew, and I work for Reading Central Salvation Army. Although from September, I've been accepted into Salvation Army officer or minister training, which means, along with my wife, Victoria, will be moving to Denmark Hill in South East London. Over the last four years that I've been working and then living in Reading, I've got to know PADS through Transform Reading and Churches Together, and I've got to know a bit about St Matthew's and maybe some of you watching at home through your work with RE Inspired. And hopefully during the course of our time together today, you'll get to know a little bit more about me as we spend some time thinking about Psalm. 103. And as I came to prepare for today, I really wished that I hadn't packed up all my Bibles and books quite so early before our move to London, because this Psalm of David has so much content that we really could spend a significant amount of time looking at it from a number of different angles. But instead, I want us to start by being a little more reflective. And as we think about the reading of these words that we heard earlier, I wonder what stood out to you. I wonder what might have caught your ear. I wonder what God is saying to you through the reading of his word this morning. For me, as I reflected and prepared, it was the theme of God's love and compassion for his children. That's you and me that particularly stood out. And as I started to think about that, I was reminded of my grandparents. For years, they've gone to the Baptist church on the corner of the road where they live. And for years at this church, there was a priest who every Sunday would preach without any notes. And every Sunday, his message would end with that reminder and that encouragement that God loves you. And that's what we're going to be thinking about this morning. But as we come to do that, as we come to think about this love and compassion of God for us, this love that David describes as abounding, so great, from everlasting to everlasting, 
I want us to think about what does that really mean and look like for us today. With our move to London coming up, it's going to mean a change to the way that Victoria and I commute. For me, it's a two year full time residential training programme. So I'll have the best commute of my life. For Victoria, well, she already has the longer commute and now she might be forced to ditch the car in favour of public transport. And the thing is, Victoria would always choose the car. But if it were me, I think I'd quite look forward to the chance to commuting on public transport. Because for years, I did it. I used to travel over three hours a day by foot on bus on the London Underground to and from my then role at Kilburn Salvation Army. And whenever I got on the tube, I used to enjoy sitting back and getting in to a good book or flicking through the daily papers or sometimes just get distracted people watching, just hoping that they never noticed. Actually, going home, it was sometimes a bit different because we lived at the end of the line, which meant that I could put my head back and go to sleep and wake up when that voice cried out all change although that never worked out so well when i went back to driving to and from work again but it was the paper that i wanted to think about this morning for me it was the metro or the london evening standard and maybe you get the paper delivered to you at home i know and work with someone who gets the daily mail not because of its content but because it has the best puzzle page going and I must say, I always used to enjoy the puzzle page best, not least because of the little cartoons they often printed alongside. And although I couldn't tell you anything really about the cartoons in the Metro or the London Evening Standard today, there is a cartoon that I want us to think about. And that is the Love Is cartoon. I don't know if you can see that whether you can recognise it or maybe even remember it. But every episode features these two little characters, Kim saying her prayers, Roberto at the door, and explore a different aspect of what love is. And as we come to think about love this morning, I wonder what's been your experience of love? Yes, God's love but also that of your friends and family and neighbours even. I wonder if you were to create your own cartoon, what you would say love is. Fortunately, as well as the uh, description that David gives us in the psalm that we're looking at today, there's also a very well-known definition of what love is found in Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. And Paul describes love like this. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres love never fails. I wonder how that marries with your experience of love today. I wonder how that marries with your experience of God's love. And I wonder if you were thinking about your own cartoon and what you draw and say, whether you would have used any of those words we've just heard. But as we think about that this morning, I also want to ask, how does that match and marry with your experience of God? Because in 1 John 4, 16, we're told that God is love. Three little words, but three hugely significant words. They're words that tell us, as we think about these words from 1 Corinthians 30, that God is patient. God is kind. He does not envy. 
He does not boast. He is not proud. God is not rude. He is not self-seeking. He is not easily angered. He keeps no record of wrongs because God does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. God always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. God never fails. As I looked at those words during preparation and then looked at verses 7 to 18 of our psalm today, I found a very similar picture of God drawn for his followers today to understand what he's about and what his love looks like. But as we've stopped to think about this definition of love found in 1 Corinthians 13, I want us now to put ourselves at the centre of these verses. Because in Ephesians 5 verse 1, we're told that we are children of love. We're told that we are imitators of God and we're challenged to live a life of love. We started off with the cartoon that says love is. Then we turn to these words that gave us a more in-depth definition and understanding. Then we thought about how God is. God is love and all of those things that we've heard about. And now I want us to put ourselves at the centre of these verses. For me, I'd say Matthew is. But as we do that, I want us to think about how well this description fits us. And so maybe you want to ask, Am I patient? Am I kind? Do I envy? Do I boast? Do I get proud? Am I rude? Am I self-seeking? Am I easily angered? Do I keep records of everybody else's wrongs? What do I choose to delight in? And in my relationships with God and others, Am I protective, trusting, hoping, persevering? Do I keep on loving? I wonder how you found it hearing those questions, asking those questions of yourself. At the end of June, our church leader at Reading Central Salvation Army went on holiday for two weeks. Well, he didn't really go anywhere. He was meant to have gone to South Africa to celebrate his niece's wedding. But in reality, I think he went to Croydon to do some tiling for his daughter and he managed to put his shoulder out doing it. But whilst he was away, I was asked to look after our church prayer meetings, which meant putting together a little devotional period just at the start before our time of prayer. And when Richard, our church leader, came back from his holiday, I realised that my devotions had been joined by the theme of gratitude during lockdown. Now, I don't know what or how much you've been able to find to give thanks for and be grateful for during lockdown. I have loved the way that creation seems to have sung during this time that we've been shut away. But one of the other things that I've seen celebrate celebrated is how relationships have strengthened and deepened and I've seen and heard about family relationships getting better in friendship groups within church congregations. I wonder if you've had an experience like that during this time and um, if so if you've been able to give thanks for it. In fact We've had this symbol of the rainbow that has come through this lockdown period with us and has come to represent a number of different things. And I recently saw it on an advert for Channel 4, this time with the slogan, just be kind. And I don't know about you, but it seems that we've been able to join in with this great celebration of kindness as neighbours and strangers have stepped up to look out for one another 
during this time. Yet, at the same time, maybe it's been slightly harder to spot where the love and compassion of God is in and amongst everything that's gone in, gone on. When we think about the loss of life, when we think about the loss of jobs and incomes, when we think about the loss of freedoms and those things that maybe we took for granted. This morning I want to end by thinking about words that were penned by a former international leader of the Salvation Army, General John Gowans, and he wrote these words. If human hearts are often tender, and human minds can pity know, if human love is touched with splendour, and human hands compassion show, then how much more is the love and compassion of our Heavenly Father, who in love forgives and supplies all that we need? As we have spent this time this morning thinking about the love and compassion of God, I want you to take away those four words with you. Then how much more? In these last couple of minutes, as we've started to think about the love and compassion that we've experienced during lockdown, that of our family and friends, that of our church family, that of neighbours and maybe even strangers, I want you to be encouraged because then how much more is the incomparable great love of your heavenly father for you. But maybe that love does seem far away today or maybe it's something you've not experienced before or maybe this lockdown experience has made you question. If so, I encourage you to use the contact details included in the description to this video to contact the Facebook team at St Matthew's so that they can explore God's love with you, encourage you of, for, about God's love and pray for you as well. Then, as I think about how we can all respond, well, maybe you individually or maybe in a group or with your family want to explore that love is and use that as part of your prayer time and in spoken prayer written prayer or even illustrated prayer think about God's love and compassion for you and thank him for it and maybe that's something as a church you'll have the chance to share at another time or maybe you want to take those words from 1 Corinthians 13 and you want to write them up and you want to put them somewhere that you're going to see them to remind you of what God's love looks like always, even during this lockdown, during these days. But also maybe to challenge you to think about how you can show that kind of love to your friends and neighbours and people that you come into contact with. Or maybe, and maybe you've already been encouraged to do this as you've looked at the Psalms as a church together. Maybe you want to write your own psalm, focusing on God's love and compassion, as well as the love and compassion of those around you. And maybe see if you can feature those four words. Then how much more? Whatever you choose to do, however you choose to respond, whatever God might have been saying to you during this time together this morning. I invite you to join me now and to share this prayer with me. I pray that we, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Amen. Love
Emma for leading us so beautifully in worship. And as we sang of our good, good father and the living hope that we have in Jesus, I was reminded of Matthew's message to us today about the enormity of God's love for us, how wide and long and high and deep it is, and the qualities of love that we're called to offer one another. Love is patient, love is kind, all of those things. So perhaps you'd like to take up his challenge to create a love is cartoon or a psalm which includes the words then how much more and if you do please share it with us and if you can do join Jan and the team at 4 p.m this afternoon at St Matthew's for our informal gathering to worship together to pray together to share together and in the meantime I'd like to pray for you again that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and high and long and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love which surpasses all knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.